Okay, so something that I think you and I actually have an oddly high level of like understanding and experience on, (laughs) but yet we're also learning a ton at the same time, is starting over at every age, right? And I, I feel like this conversation has come up multiple times between my children, your children, us, like this just topic where I talked about, we were talking with our kids the other day. I was talking with um, our 13 year old and she was talking about how, you know, sometimes you feel like you just have to keep doing something because that's what you've been doing or that's what you said you were going to do, or that's where you like, I started this thing. So how do I, and I was like, well, but if you don't feel like that's where you should be or the Lord's putting something on your heart, or it's just, it's not just something isn't right. Like you're not bound to that. You can start over. You can say, this isn't where I want to be, or this isn't where I want to go anymore. I don't feel that's right. You know what I mean? Like you can say, like you have that power to say, I want to start over. You can do that. And I think that's a really wise, mature thing to learn at a young age and to be supported and developed in and whatever, right? Yes. There's times when we need to stick stuff out and make it to the end. But I think there's also that power in saying like, Hey, like I need a fresh start. I need to start over. And learning that in your teens, I think is amazing. And then I thought about it, like starting over in your twenties, like I know we did, like we had a huge start over moment when I ended up pregnant at 17, got married. We lived in a dead end town. We moved to the other side of the country. We knew no one, right? Like we started over. And then I think of like my twenties, like we were chasing the corporate ladder, doing all of the stuff, realized like, man, this is miserable. I don't want to do this. Like maybe if we work for ourselves, like that'll be what's so much better. We started over in our twenties. For us in our thirties, we hit this like, man, we work for ourselves, but that's really no different than working for the corporate ladder because we're still chasing the thing and like running and doing all the stuff. We started over, went into ministry, right? And now coming up on 40 and we're all collectively looking at this like, man, like community is where it's at and like building the space and coming together and building up families and investing in the other generations. Like, you know what I mean? Like now that's like, the starting over point. I'm sure 50, 60 is beyond as the Lord Terry's like, we'll continue to do this. But I was thinking about it and I was like, I know that it's scary and it's big because it's a lot of pieces. We've talked about this a little bit. You're getting ready to completely uproot and start over your life that you never expected having to be in that position. So I get that it's scary and it's big. And there there is like, there's lots of pieces and all the things. Like I'm not saying that it's just like a simple, oh yeah, just start your life over. But I think the the base truth of it is you do have the power and ability to start your life over. And I think that that's something worth sharing with others, because I think sometimes all of us, we can find ourselves in positions, regardless of how you got there. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe it was absolutely your fault that you got yourself tangled up in that position, right? Like maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. And it was just some circumstantial, the way the cards were dealt, you had no say, right? But it doesn't mean that you are stuck in that and have no options, have no choices just because that's where you are. Like you can start over regardless of how old you are. I've had this conversation with my husband because he's like, I'm getting older, right? I'm almost, I'm too old. I'm too old to start over. I can't do this. And it's like, I don't think there's such thing as too young or too old. You can do that. You have that ability. Okay. You had no idea that this conversation happened in our house yesterday. Last night, even. As I talked to my oldest daughter, who is, I have to put on a plane and she will be leaving tonight. So, but we were having some really deep, big conversations and she has a lot of, a lot of choices to make because she is at that, that peak age where you get to decide what you're doing with your life. Mm -hmm. Ah, welcome to 20. It's, you don't are, you're obviously the one who's making the choice, but the choices aren't. I don't actually believe that you're the one in control making all the choices. I think you're just acting out the path. 
but <clears throat> we were talking about it and she was she was expressing that there are so many pieces mm -hmm. and we just use the term variables it's something that you can change in and out there are so many variables in this that yeah there are there are a ton of different outcomes that can come out of this and then I realized what she was actually afraid of was making the wrong choice. And I looked at her and I said, oh, baby girl, mm -hmm. there is no wrong choice. There is no right choice. There is no wrong choice. You are going to become an adult and you're going to recognize that everything is not black and white any longer. There is no clear cut right choice, clear cut wrong choice there are clear cut obviously oh that is sin that's a clear cut right. but we're talking about like do i go today or do i go tomorrow kind of choices right mm -hmm. um that kind of choice doesn't always have a right and a wrong necessarily mm -hmm. it just has outcomes and consequences and consequences are not always bad it's just yeah. the natural progression and the outcome of a situation. The pros so, and the cons. Right? Mm -hmm. There are always pros that come out of something, but there are always some cons that are thrown in. Like there just are. That's what being the adult means is that you recognize that there are pros and that there are cons. I told my husband, being an adult is weighing out what sucks less. Yes. Like, what's the best of being a kid? You're making the best of the best choices. What is my best choice here? What do I do? And then as an adult, when you get to be considerably older, you choose what stinks less. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just, yep, there are pros. You recognize there are pros or cons to every choice, but the cons kind of feel weirder and you got to deal with them. So you like pick the one with the less amount because... And even sometimes the one with more cons is actually still the better one. Yeah. And you have to go through like, because it's not even just which has more pros, which has more cons. I'll pick that one. Right. I feel like that's kind of teenagers. Then you yeah. lose that at some point. And it's like, no, no, no. Because sometimes the one, even though it has way more cons, it's the better choice hmm. here. Right. So you start to it is it's so difficult because you're right. It isn't we're not talking sinful, not sinful. Right. No. We, we've established that foundation it's here. It's so easy if that were the conversation we were having because it's Please, so cut yes. and dry and like literal mm -hmm. black and white. This is sin. This yeah. is not sin. That's so easy. This is like, which would feel better? Which would set me up for a better future? How do I put these pieces together? How do I work with the family that I have and mm -hmm. the people that are involved in this? And how do I make everybody more comfortable? And those are adult choices. Yeah. So we've had a lot of those. And like that conversation of there is no actual wrong choice in this. It's just the domino that starts the which one you're going to pick. That's it. Mm -hmm. But so we had that literal conversation last night that there is no wrong choice. There are just choices. And in life... That's what you got to figure out. And it's poopy, but like, it's okay. Yeah, It's okay. So it's funny that you're like making these conversations with your oldest yeah. girl. You had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And that I've been having these conversations with our oldest girl daughter and they all align, but your oldest girl daughter is like six, seven years younger than my oldest daughter, but it's the same, same thing. it's the same fear. It's the same, yeah. like, what if I get this wrong? What if I make the wrong? What if I move across the country and, and then my whole life falls apart and then, and then, and then it's all of that, like, huh? And you kind of become paralyzed in it. Mm -hmm. But all of her choices have those well then this happens and then this happens and then this happens because that's the way life works mm -hmm. oh maybe when you get older you see further so you're not just seeing that two domino that falls you're seeing yeah. like 
the 35 dominoes that fell. And then when you're older, you see, oh, wow, that like knocked down that thing way over there. Oh, golly. Right. Because there's that like power of experience when you've gone through it. Like we have literally either lost or given away all of our worldly possessions and started over our lives three, at least three times. I can think of off the top of my head. We're thinking literally we've lost everything in a flood, maybe four times. No, I'm not giving you a thumbs up. Um, uh, I'm trying, anyways, but we, we've literally like gotten or lost, had taken from us every single earthly possession. You earthly restarted. Yes. Very physical sense, y'all. Very earthly restarted. Okay. Yes. And, and I will just give the example of one time we literally woke up to our house being flooded. I'm not giving you a thumbs up. Our house being flooded, having to be evacuated by boat, being in a shelter. Everything we just owned last night is now floating down a river. One time saying, I think we need to go do this. We can't do it with all the stuff. We literally put all of our stuff in our garage, posted on Craigslist. Hey, if you're in need and this can be a blessing, come take it. Gave away like all but a few possessions that like we kept in our car because they were like quite literally our things that like we used, right? So in both extremes and variations in between. But I think that was that point because when we have found ourselves, I'll just be honest, multiple times in our lives in situations that we shouldn't be in. Some were our faults. Some we most absolutely made awful decisions and put ourselves right into that box, right? That happened. Other times were just situational. Um, other times were not that we were in a bad place, but it just, something needed to change. Something wasn't right. We knew God was calling us to do something else. And we were just like, but that's scary. I don't know what's going to happen. That's really different than what we're doing. You know, we had all of those like, ah, is that the right domino to knock over? Cause then we're going to knock down all of the, like, is that where we should go? But I think that moment when it was like, man, I think our society, our upbringing, again, just the, the cards we've been dealt makes us feel like, well, that's where I have to be. Right. Isn't this is total. I'm so sorry, but like, isn't the cliche bloom where you are planted? Right. Yeah. That's like, I didn't even, I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't even know where you were going with your, your point, but if I bloomed where I was planted, I've been planted in this city, in this mm -hmm. state right mm -hmm. here, where I now in my life cannot get the health care that I need. Yeah. Um, I The doctors actually don't exist. We don't have any locally. So they're sending me about eight to 12 hours away um, to even be uh, evaluated. Mm -hmm. So th I've, I've, expand, I've uh, depleted my resources, mm -hmm. right? So if I am to bloom where I am planted and this is the only place I am allowed to go, I, I would have peaked already. And now I am on a very, very steady decline because my resources are not available. Yeah. That's a, that's such a finite decision and choice that I don't have that that makes me feel like I don't have any choices I have no mm -hmm. I have no like say in it and in reality I have so much say in it I could just pack I could I could literally just walk away from my house and get into my car and drive as far as my car oh, go. Out because yeah. right my car is not going to go very far but hey it'll get where it gets It'll go somewhere. <laughs> but like, I could make that choice because that is mm -hmm. an actual choice that I have. But if I mm -hmm. went with that bloom where you were planted, I'm, I'm done. I've kind of reached my limit and I am doomed to die at that point. Like yeah. that's, that's the overall feeling. And like, mm -hmm. who wants to feel like that? Who wants to live out the rest of their life feeling like, well, that was the best I could do. Ah. That's weird. I, and I was, what, you said you were talking to your oldest about, mm -hmm. um, well, 
like, how do you know when you're not, when you, when you're done? And my thought was, well, only quitters quit. Yeah. That's the sentence I heard growing up mm -hmm. and, and instinctively I was like, oh yeah, quitters don't quit or, or quitters, quitters always quit. But like, you right. can't be that quitter that quits. What mm -hmm. Ugh. Oh, what kind of a person does that? You right. Like they have no ethic, no backbone, no anything. Right. You just, that kind of MLM mentality. It's, it's just that my sister was an MLM -er, So I hear, I hear the tactics. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, it's just one sale away. Your yeah. family doesn't understand. It's just mm -hmm. right around the corner. You just need to push harder. Well, when do you like, I pushed all I could push and like, this isn't working. And um, now a doctor needs to come in and like C-section me. Yeah. Because right. I'm, th I'm thinking of like an extreme. If I've pushed all I can push and it, it isn't going anywhere, nothing's happening, nothing's progressing. Eventually, a doctor will step in and go, oh, goodness, this is not how this is supposed to work. Let me assist you because yes. this is damaging everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. So it it is, and I, I wish it was biblical that you could just flip open the book and go, oh, Right here in Sabrina 1.5, it says that I'm supposed to move to Marion? Oh my goodness, I've never even heard of Marion. How? Okay, God, it's in the book. I hear you. I see it. Let's go. I wish it that I wish it were yeah. that cut and dry. It would be so helpful. But it's not. And we don't have anything like that to go off of. No. And I think that there's something like, I know for me, right. I got pregnant at 17, ended up married in Vegas on a Wednesday and finished high school. And I had this like, okay, well, I can't, you know, I can't just be someone who got pregnant in high school and is set to live in those statistics. Right. So you know, I think that was my first thing of like, okay, well, I've got to start over. I'm here now. This is what happened. I'm now a wife and a mom and all of these things, but I'm going to get a good career. I'm going to go directly to college. I'm going to, you know, I started like, okay, that was my first attempt at like, I'm not going to just sit here. I'm going to boom, 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 all the things, right? Like I'm going to do this. And then I remember when you're going to climb the societal ladder. Mm -hmm. Cause that's exactly what I hear. I hear the yep. societal standards and you were like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this mm -hmm. standard. I got to make sure I don't do that standard. Cause then people mm -hmm. look at me that way. And I got to make sure I'm on this standard. Right. I hear you. And I'm going to max them all out. Right. Yeah. And then I hit this point where I was like, I dropped out of college after a couple of years. And then it was like, man, like we were going to move back East and I'll, I'll get it figured out when I get there. And then it was one of those things I know for me, when I started reading about, I mean, I don't now believe in college anymore anyways, that's a different topic. But I remember when I started reading about this, the, this just life examples of high level entrepreneurs and all the things, and they're all college dropouts, right? And I started learning about all this stuff. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting, right? It, it's something that made me start thinking a little differently and started going, okay, so maybe I don't have to have a piece of paper in order to find success. But then for me, it was that, okay, well, I'm going to start over, right? I did the corporate ladder thing. Then it was like, okay, I'm going to build a business, we built a very successful business. And it was like, ha, I did it without a college degree, right? Like I dropped out of business school and still did it. You, you know, like you had those things, but I think it was, although it was part of my journey and my path to where God has me now. And I trust that. And I love that, you know, and all those, those wonderful things, but it was, it was that idea that when I realized that just because society said, just because my upbringing dictated, just because the statistics show, right. Just because all those pieces doesn't mean that I'm stuck there with no option because that's where I am. So I have, I like, I get the sentiment of bloom where you're planted, but you're right. Like what if where I'm planted isn't where I want to bloom, right? Like 
Who says I have to be stuck there? Who says I have to? Now, was it difficult to get rid of all of our stuff, move to a state that we literally knew one person in, and even him, we didn't really know very well. And it's not like he's right, right? Like, was it difficult? Yeah. We were broke. Like, I don't even know how to describe. Like, it was so bad. Like, there were so many difficult things. Was it difficult to process through, like, what I thought of myself when I dropped out of college? No, that I felt like a failure. Like, I was trying to do the things to prove that I wasn't a loser. And then I just dropped out. Can I start over? Right? Like, I chased the career success to prove, look, I'm doing it. Right? Like, I work in Uptown. I wear heels every day. I have a designer bag. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing the things you're supposed to do, right? I don't like my life. This is miserable, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I picture you wearing an, um, like you put on an M&M shell of a, a personality of a boss babe personality. Yeah. You like mm -hmm. wore that M and M shell around, and then and then it started cracking, and you're like, "No, I'll hold you together. I'll just duct tape you. Come on, come on. I'm boss babe. This is all I've ever known. I've all I've ever known is M and M boss babe. Yes, yes. But okay. like, but but I mean, don't you see that point though? Like, there's that difference of the world tells you put hold yes. that shell together, get yes. stronger, do more, da, 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 whatever. But I remember like having this, like I, it was like a weekend in the midst of all of this. And I'm like, I just want a day like today where we're home, we're together. I can get my cleaning done because I enjoy doing that. We can make dinner and not be rough. You know, it's like just these little things that I'm like, we had this card table that I pulled outside and I set up on our little back patio. We had this like three, like 3,500 square foot brand new house. It was beautiful. It, we had like three living rooms. Um, our master bedroom, I'm not kidding. Our master bedroom and our walk-in closet was like the size of our house now. It was ginormous, right? Beautiful home. We worked so hard. We had to be in the right neighborhood with the right house, the right, all the things, right? And I had this little card table that I pulled out. We had a little patio and I set up this, this rink-a-dink little card table. I don't even know how we had it. I, it was maybe something we picked up to have extra seating at like an event or so. I don't even know. Like it was what, like, I don't even know how we ended up with it, but I pulled it out. We drug out our chairs. We only had Travis at this point. I hadn't I didn't even have Lily yet. And um, I set this little table like pulled out stuff. I think I even put like a candle and like a, a couple flowers on it. Like I set up this table. And when my husband got home from work, I was like, oh, we're having dinner outside. And we like sat outside and did this. And I just I like, I remember that. And you know what's funny is I have a picture of it somewhere too. It's like an old granny because it was like taken on my Blackberry, you know, back when that was a thing. But like, I just have this little picture. But it was like in that moment that I was like, I feel so like, this feels so much lovelier than all, you know what I mean? Like we're checking off the list over here. We have the big house. We live in the right neighborhood. We make sure we're seen at the right events. We're wearing the right, you know what I mean? Like we're doing all the things that we felt we had to do, but yet sitting here at this little wobbly <laughs> card table <laughs> at this little, you know, setup that we have, like that was such a moment for me where I was like, I don't want that. Like this feels so much lovelier. Why it's, do I have to be there? It's almost like your body was physically reacting um, in, a, in a feel. And I know feelings mm -hmm. can be misled. And like I, I can, okay. yes. But like your body felt the joy that you were meant to feel. Mm -hmm opposed to the joy that society tells you you're supposed to feel mm -hmm. because you're supposed to get those good feels from climbing the corporate ladder and doing the things and mm -hmm. not restarting and come on, you have a house and like you've never known anywhere else, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, it's all of those things that you'd be giving up for that mm -hmm. over there, that rickety card table. Uh, you're not right. supposed to feel that way. That's gross. 
but your body was like, yeah, I know I was supposed to feel it for a boss babe, but I actually am experiencing it in simple motherhood and like making my husband dinner outside. This is weird, yeah. but your body experienced it and you expected to experience it there and you felt it here and you were like, this is not what I thought was going to happen. I have always been afraid of those situations. I've, mm -hmm. I've made a choice. I am now stuck in my stock in my choice. And I have to live it forever. Mm -hmm. I've always seen choices as incredibly concrete. Yeah. I was, I was raised with very different parents and you were talking about dropping out of college. And I was like, didn't your parents ridicule you for like, didn't Nan tease you about this every Christmas from then until now? What are you doing? What, how? For all of eternity. <laughs> huh? Um, I might have had the exact same experience and I might be a class away from having a certain degree and I've chosen to not take one class and not have a degree for like 20 years. Yeah. That is not the choice that that's not the choice that uh, was wanted. That was wanted. No. But now I think about it. Okay. To take yourself out of the emotion and just look at the logistics of things. With our daughter, I have her look at her sister's life because she's very protective of her little sisters. And I'm like, okay, this is not you. Your sister does this thing. And now she is in this situation. How would you want her to logistically respond, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to you do these things about logistics and the things, right? <clears throat> and I instinctively went, ooh, what would I do if my eldest daughter came to me and was like, mama, I know I've been going to college. I know I've been doing this thing. And um, I actually think I want to get married. And I actually think I want to be a stay-at-home mom and not do that degree that I was going to right. get. How would I feel with my daughter? Because mm -hmm. she is actually older than I was when when you I, did that same thing. Like, yep. When I yeah. did the, the yep. So I think about it like that to take my emotion, my oh mama logic out yeah. of it. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Would I be upset with her for making that choice? No, because it's her choice to make at any moment. She could pick it back up and do it. Cause it doesn't like, doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a choice that I'm going to assume because I've raised my child to prayerfully consider stuff. And she is the spontaneous, this little I want to do this. I want to do that kind of person. I mean, yeah. I wonder, I wonder what that's like, but I can't even imagine. I know <laughs> it really is like I'm raising Heidi. It truly, truly is. It is scary. And we do y'all, we just joke about this, that I think Sabrina is in Northern California. We used to live in Southern California. So we understand that it is not, possible and our children were born like six months apart but yeah. we're fairly certain that my firstborn is actually oh, yeah. hers and her firstborn is oh, yeah. so my child that's scary oh, yeah. my husband yesterday in a conversation with your daughter was like oh you are Heidi I don't even yes. know how to process this you guys are literally the same person so I, I get it I get it like you and her are the same type of person and me yeah. and your oldest son, are the same type of person. So you are raising me and I am raising you, but in other forms, but yes. So she's really spontaneous like this, but I have done my due diligence and I've taught her to be at least prayerful over the things that 
are dominoes. Mm -hmm. What you, uh, what socks you wear, not necessarily a big old domino thing. Um, where you're going to live, that could be a domino thing. What state you're going to belong in, domino thing. If you're going to get married, domino thing. So like we've taught her to be prayerful about domino things. And if she came to me and said, I have prayerfully made this choice. Mm -hmm. And this is a path that I believe God has put me on. I would be high-fiving her mm -hmm. and telling her, I am so proud of you for making a choice. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the choice is going to go. I don't know if this is the right choice because there is no right choice. But like for what you're thinking, I don't know if this is the right choice that's going to get you there. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. But high five making a choice. You did a great job. Let's let's figure this out now. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. And I'd help her figure out how to make the choices to get to the place that she wants to go. But it is very big and it is very scary to not know what's going to happen and still try to make the choices. So yeah, like I picture you and I'm like, oh, but oh, I'm the quitter. And I didn't graduate the college with the degree like I was supposed to. And the letters are not there. And like, ooh. And I've always been afraid of the word failure. Because if you if you quit something, you just. You know, the sentence that's like. Oh, if you just try, you've succeeded. And the only failure is giving up. And like, so you don't ever want to look like a failure and just give up on something. But sometimes the choices that you made are done. Mm -hmm. Like they ran their course. God yep. has used them up. That was the choice that was meant to be made then. And then he had you on this path. And now he's like, okay, but now I need you to circle around Israel again, because you can't actually go into it. Mm -hmm. But God, um, like it's right there and yeah. it's right there. Can't I just like, whoop, can't I just, it's right there. Like I could build a bridge. I build, I'm so handy, God, I could build a bridge. And he's like, no, I want you to circle it again. Yeah. Ah. But that's not the path that I thought we were on, God. Uh -huh. I... Right. And that was that thing where it's like through life and through starting over so many times, doing it in my teens, doing it in my 20s, doing it in my 30s, getting ready to do it again here in my 40s, right? Like, decades of doing this, it was like, it was that moment for me because I was so afraid of being a failure. I felt like I started as a failure because I ended up pregnant. I then was doing married life while all my friends were out doing single party kid life, right? You know, like I, like all these things were happening and I was like, man, I failed. I dropped out of college. I I got, I even felt almost like a failure for not wanting corporate life anymore. You know what I mean? You were absolutely failing at societal yeah. standards yeah because that's what that list was those were all societal standards and you were like oh i am failing every one of these yeah i think that's an internal mindset where you have to shift it to mm -hmm. this is not i don't care what society wants society can want what society wants the world is gonna world y'all it's gonna world but our our standard and our gauge should not be world. Mm -hmm. And when you started lining it up with, it's okay to start over again, because like God called biblical people to start over again. And it wasn't starting over again. It was just circling around the place again. It was just continuing the path. And that's just the continuation of the path. But that's right. not what society says. Exactly. Because yeah. you understand that there actually is no such thing as failure. The only time there's failure is when, because you know, I hate, I, I don't do well with the failure word. Um, but, but, but it's because, right? But it was in that moment where it was like, the only actual failure is not trying. 
right? It is, is the, the only failure is the giving up in the way of like, God has a path for you. You have the next piece that's going to fall. The only time you fail is when you go, uh, well, I'm stuck here. I can't try. You're right. That is too big of a move. That is too crazy of an idea. That is too far, you know, away from the life. You know, we had never lived anywhere nearly country in any way, shape or form. But I was like off grid, sustainable living. I don't want to be part of the thing we're going to do. Like I was so stuck. We knew nothing. Our learning curve of even keeping a chicken was the biggest learning curve one could possibly imagine. We were a bunch of party kids from the desert. We could do dirt bikes. No, no clue what it meant to work no well. Joke. Y'all sound, and I know that this is not the lifestyle that you lived, but mm-hmm. you start describing your big old houses and your boss babe and <clears throat> little old country me. I picture a Kardashian. And now you're telling me that this Kardashian is going to raise chickens? What is happening? That's not what, what? No, but that's how I picture you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right, but it is, uh, well, I don't think we were that. I could see where we definitely did, you, you know what I mean? Like we did, and you know what's funny though is when we did that, we literally sold my husband had more designer label articles of things that, I mean, you would check it, but we thought that was really important to us. We being poor kids growing up, we thought being successful meant we walk into the big fancy stores and we buy the things and look at us. That's how we know we're moving up. I'm just saying it what it was. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with having quality pieces, but we thought that's what it meant to be moving up in life, right? When we had this, we need to start over. What are we doing? This isn't it. We literally sold off his entire collection to fund our starting over, right? Like I will still tell you, like it still kind of makes me a little sad I bought him this Gucci wallet one year for his birthday or something. I don't even remember. And that was the last piece he sold off because I'm like, but that's the one I bought for you. And like, it was so special. And like, you know what I mean? Like it was like a thing because we just walked into the Gucci store and paid full price. And we really thought we had like made it. I know it's ridiculous. Like, I know this is all stupid, but I'm just saying in honesty that we felt like that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to be those people. And now we're literally selling off all your things, all your watches, all your wallet, you know, all, all person, you know, all the things because we grew as individuals and came to that point of going, this is dumb. Why am I doing this? Like, this isn't me. This isn't what I want. Like, that's not where I find success. That's not where I find value. That's not where I find like my fulfillment. I want to live in the country and raise chickens, right? Like (laughs) I want to go do this thing now, but it was such a, you know, such a process that again, I don't think there is too young or too old to do it. I think the only time you fail at it is when you think I'm too young or I'm too old, you know, like I'm too scared to try and to say, I don't know if this is the right choice, but sitting here in fear and giving up, is failure, right? It's not, what if I try and don't succeed? What if you never do anything? Give it a try. Maybe it won't work out. We've had plenty of failed attempts at things. Absolutely. We moved to the Florida Keys, stayed one night and said, this is not where I want to be. Like we stood on the beach, the most beautiful beach I've ever been to in my life and said, this isn't it. It isn't it. We need to do something else. Right. But that wasn't a failure because that taught us something that was invaluable. Now we know we just learned something huge. Wow. You know what I mean? And so I think that, you know, that that's it. It doesn't matter how old you are. You know, I saw this conversation with my husband. He's like, I'm old now. I'm over 40. Like there's no hope for me. And I'm like, that's crazy. You're still alive. God gave you today. You're not dead. 
there's always a chance. There's always an option. So I feel every ounce of what your husband says, I have felt so old in the last couple of weeks. My daughter turned 20. Mm -hmm. And so we've had teeny, we've had four teenagers for a very long time. And now we can no longer say that we have four teenagers because now she is an adult, an adult adult. Cause there's yeah. like a trial period of adult between yeah. 18 and 20. Cause that's like, she's not bought the subscription. <laughs> yeah. She tried it out. She bought it. She committed. Yeah. Uh huh. So I felt very old recently and we've had a lot of conversations about what life is like when it was starting out and the, the confusion of it all. And I think these are very interesting conversations to have. And the way you were just like, I know this all seems, but this is the way it was. It, mm -hmm. it seems frivolous, but like, this is what we thought. Mm -hmm. I think that is so stupidly ridiculous to share with one another that that's what you thought. It was frivolous, but you only know that now. Mm -hmm. It was just a thought then. And like, you wouldn't have known what that thought you wouldn't have known that that thought was in fact frivolous because it felt like a lot in that moment. Yeah. But I think these are problems that every human has. All of us have these same problems and these same dilemmas and you're not explaining how to fix that dilemma. You are explaining how you walked through that dilemma how you did it and what you were thinking. And then we get to look at the outcome of it and go, oh, okay. So she felt this because you can't see feelings. Only way you can see a feeling is if somebody just directly tells you, this is what I'm feeling. <laughs> and they have to be honest, but like, that's it. You can't like see feelings. So even if you were walking through that circumstance and I watched you walk through it, I wouldn't have known that you and your husband struggled over getting rid of a wallet because it made you feel really big. Like the feeling was really big and you didn't know what to do with that feeling. And you had to work through that feeling. And then you were like, okay. <sighs> and then even still you have a splinter of that feeling because when you talked about it, you were like, oh, I did. I felt that. I wonder if I still feel that. And you like check to see if the splinter's still there. And you're like, oh wait, okay. Nope, I remember it. I remember the feeling. Is it still there? Oh, it's a little, it's still sore. Okay, I see it. But you get to share that with somebody else so they don't ram a stake into their arm and go, oh my goodness, I didn't know a splinter was gonna come out of that. Why didn't you warn me? <laughs> Haven't you seen the splinter in my arm? And they're like, uh, yeah, but I didn't know that you did it yourself. Like, yeah. it's so, mm -hmm. I really, I think this is why, this is not a conversation that we've had, but I think this is why the Bible exists. I think the Bible, obviously the bigger things, come on, we got it clear. But I think the Bible exists because it gives us the story stories of how it worked. And we all are story driven people. Tell me the story of what that happened. Tell me how that worked for you. Tell me your story. Mm -hmm. Tell me your story so that I can I see can the facts, but then you tell me the story that went and I'm like, all right, I got you. You don't know how anybody is feeling until they tell you the story. Tell me the story. Tell me how that worked for you. Tell me the, the ins and the outs and the variables that you chose so that I know the outcome and then like I can compare it, but not uh, I can weigh out my options differently. And oh, OK, I think story is so important. And unless you are humble and you can tell your story in a realistic way, because is it good? Does it feel fun to tell people that you loved? 
Gucci wallet at this moment. Are you like, yeah, you're like a dummy. <laughs> but unless, unless you shared that that's how you felt then, that you valued it, and now you've grown and you've experienced things and you shared your story. And now other people can go, oh, like my daughter would look at that and go, oh, oh. I remember feeling that way about that backpack, I want, whatever. That blah, 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 that designer car, that blah, blah, blah. Oh, the designer name isn't important. I don't need that. I don't need to take out a loan to buy that designer thing because in a couple of years, like Heidi sold it off, not, not a couple of years, but like down the road, Heidi sold it off um, to fund her new life. So is it really worth this or, and it could at that moment, that could be a choice you make and that's completely fine, but it gives other people something to weigh other things against. And it gives, it gives people like me a more complete, understanding of the way the picture is meant to look. And I go, I see, I gotcha. I don't have to live that life to understand that lesson. I get to just look at it and go, oh, I don't want to do that. Mm. And so I think the story thing is really, really important. You're telling your daughter stories about how you, the choices you made. I've been telling our daughter stories about the choices we've made and where it got us and how it did it. And yep, that's the choice I made. I know it's dumb. I am not saying I made the smartest choices. I'm telling you the choice I made. Yeah, I think there's something so, you know, so powerful about that in being able to grow in whatever season of life we're in, whatever decade of life you might be sitting in, because I think there is something that is so freeing and so powerful when you realize I don't have to live the world standards. I not. I need to figure out where the setting is on my laptop because I forget every time until we get on here, but I don't have to live by the world standards. I don't have to be stuck just because these are the cards that I either dealt myself or happened to be handed. And I can start over because the only true failure is living in that fear and not walking the path that you feel God calling you to be on. And so whether it is taking a risky decision in your teens or a risky decision in your forties, right? Like wh whatever it might be, like every day that God gives us is an opportunity for a full life. I mean, I think it's amazing. The more and more we realize, like, I remember the first time I realized how old Moses was when the whole Egypt thing took place. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. In the cartoons, he's like a young fit dude. You know what I mean? And then you're reading and you're like, wait, hold on, let me do some math. How old are you? You know? And, and I think like, especially by our standards, you look at that and I'm like, honey, you're hitting your prime. What do you mean you think in your like, ah, I'm 40, I'm too old now. I'm like, Shh, this is prime time, buddy, let's go. You know, like, I, I think it is so exciting, you know, when you, the more you feel that, because again, it's that, it's, it was that little card table on our back patio, ignoring our big, beautiful brick house we had sitting out on this little rickety table and being like, this is where it's at. I just found it. I, I, I feel that peace inside where all of a sudden I went, oh, now I got, I got to see, I have the picture somewhere in a file. I have to see if I can find it because it will look pathetic. I mean, it absolutely was, but like just thinking about it, like I'm like, that was it. And what I think is so funny is we still to this very day, we'll sit outside. Like it is a point for us to have a spot outside to sit down and eat and to have a look, because that is something that was my clicking moment of that's where life is at. That's where I'm meant to be. That's what matters. And if it means that I sell my designer bags, I give up on my career, I walk away from my amazing business I built, I whatever to pursue that thousand percent, I'm in. That's where you're going to find me. I don't care how old I am. <laughs> I don't care if it's just, you know, I'm young and dumb or I'm old and probably should not think I can start over at life, right? Like I'm going to go do it because I know that's where I'm supposed to be. And it might seem silly to everyone else, but like, I know it. That's I, think, wrong. I think that right there would be the closing is that you need to know that that's where you're meant to be though, mm -hmm. that you have to prayerfully yeah. know that that is your spot, 
but then also you need to feel that like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that that moment that you are sitting on the carpet and playing with your baby and you just feel this, wow, wow. Or it's bright and sunny and you're driving with your husband and you just turn to him and he's chatting with you and you go, <sighs> and it's that deep breath. And we all know this feeling. It's like impossible to describe, but we all know what it is. Yeah. Prayerfully seek it. And then once it happens, you're like, oh, wait, God, that was it. Yes, this is it. Because I think we've gotten so used to drowning that out and being like, well, that's not a reality. I can't actually do that, right? We have all these reasons of, ah, that's not what life, like it's nice, but that's not realistic, right? We have all these reasons. I'm too young, I'm too old, that's not realistic. There's real life thing, right? We, we start putting all these qualifiers and I'm not saying that there aren't valid qualifiers we still have to deal with, right? I can sit out and have a lovely dinner. I still have bills to pay. So I got kids to feed, right? Like I still have the things to do, like I get it. But it doesn't mean that we just have to be like, nah. Uh, you know, like that's the failure when we're too afraid. We think we can't, you know, if God's put it on your heart, it's there for a reason. Like if he keeps pressing that upon your spirit and keep like mm, mm, that right there, go for it prayerfully, go for it. That's amazing. So thanks for coming to my TED talk today. <laughs> I've almost finished my tea. Um, I know you've got your coffee, but I, I hope that that can be an encouragement. I mean, if that can encourage one other person, praise God, right? Like, I think that's awesome. So thank you for joining me today and for chatting with me. And hopefully, like we said, hopefully you can help at least one other person. And if there's anything ever we can do, any questions y'all have, feel free to ask. Um, join us for a prayer gathering we got coming on later today, every Wednesday at 11 Eastern Standard Time. We're doing that. Um, big, exciting stuff we're working on around here. But I really do hope that it helps to encourage and build up all the things like this. So thank you all for hanging out with us. We'll let y'all get back to your day, but hopefully this puts some, some prayerful thoughts moving through all of our heads today as we continue on. <laughs> Bye friends.